guys, hope you're having a great one. So, something a little bit different. Now, about six months ago, I created the Lazy Hazy, as it was named. Uh, it was a Cheats Hazy IPA, and uh, well, it tasted really, really good. So if you haven't seen those videos, and well, you want to, because you're interested in IPA, without having to make everything yourself, which is kind of time consuming, I'll stick the links up there, so well, you can see what I did. Now, six months later, I'm going to pull out a bottle and give it a go. Uh, it is one of the last bottles that I have left, and uh, well, I haven't drank any in about four months, um, because well, I liked it that much, I pretty much drank it all. So, I'm just going to go grab the Lazy Hazy, and uh, I'm going to have a pint. So we have pretty much the last two litres, I actually have four litres left, uh, just in case I make mistakes and wanted to sample it. So, there is a bit of a debate of, uh, well, when is the best time to drink an IPA? And, well, we tried it when it was fresh and it was beautiful. I mean, citrusy, low bittering, it, it was extraordinarily tasty, considering it was a cheat. Um, we shortcut it by using a really cheap beer kit that tasted horrible, just kind of like a pale ale. Pale ale doesn't have a lot of taste. So, let's see what it tastes like now. Now it has been stored in the dark. Um, it has been just kept out of the way in the dark for the last pretty much six months. And I am getting, I'm still getting some of those um, Cool. Citrus notes, kind of like grapefruit, but nowhere near as uh, as powerful as it was since hops deteriorate over time. So just quickly pour out a cheeky pine. And well, it looks not bad. It looks like a pint. It has the nose on it does smell like hops. Cheers. Okay, this does not taste like it did when it was fresh. Um, all of those tasty, like citrus hoppy notes, you know, all the things that made this taste great have dulled um, like a blunt knife, basically. The predominant flavor in this pint now is the bitter edge. Um, and that's the one thing that I've always hated in IPAs, uh, that bitterness that you get. It overpowers everything else. If it didn't have that bitter edge, there are some citrus notes, possibly even grapefruit. I can't discern the flavors anymore because the bitter edge is just kind of overpowering. And we didn't boil any of this to give it bittering. Um, all that flavor, is this coming from the deterioration of the hops over the last six months? So this IPA is predominantly bitter now. Now it has been six months and uh, I was drinking it for the first two months and I had to stop myself. This would have been gone very, very quickly. But I wanted to do this video so I kept one back. And it answers the question that kind of, it's on everyone's lips. A lot of questions do get asked is, do you drink IPA fresh or do you let it age? It really comes down to your personal taste. Do you like IPA with a lot of bitter in it? Because then you age it. Or do you like it fresh and hoppy and full of other aromas? Then you drink it pretty quick. Now the compromise between both of those things is to super hop. Um, I never really understood that because, well, I was never into IPA. But now I've made an IPA that, or fake IPA, that is actually drinkable. Uh, in my opinion, it has got a lot of hop flavor, very low bittering. I can see why super hopping is a thing. The more hops you add in, the longer the shelf life of your IPA. It makes perfect sense if you look at it like that. If I added in 200 grams of hops, instead of the 100 grams that I added in, I would have got double the shelf life. So it still would have tasted good, not necessarily great, but it would still be really good. At six months, when the hops have roughly dissipated by about 
it would have tasted a lot like it did when it was fresh. <clears throat> Which is a little bit to get your head around. So if you added in 300 grams at the time that you got to nine months, it would taste like it did when it was fresh. Maybe slightly a bit more bittering in there, but you wouldn't really notice that because all of the hoppy flavors would have been still on the forefront. The bitterness would have been at the back. Kind of makes you wonder what they do with all that commercial IPA to make it taste so foul. Sorry guys, but this isn't the best, but it's still drinkable. And it still is basically like drinking wine by the pint. Pretty cool. Anyway, I'm going to stop the video there because I have drank pretty much two liters of wine. And I can ramble among the best of them after doing that. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's given you a few um, kind of insights into IPA that I didn't fully understand either. I love the fact that I didn't know and now I've done it, I kind of have a better understanding. And I can see why they do the super hopping and the argument between fresh and old. It's pretty cool. So don't forget to check out some of the other videos and well, subscribe if you feel like it. Get out numbering guys. Cheers. It's rough, but it's drinkable. So I just want to take a second to thank my patrons. Uh, they're helping me grow the channel, upgrade my equipment, all of that fantastic stuff. And as a thank you to them and for future patrons, I also do four Patreon-only videos per month. So it's pretty handy if you want a little bit extra. Um, so there's some other links to videos down below. And of course, the Patreon and subscribe button. Don't forget to check those out. Yeah.